Hello, I'm Black Bright. Thank you for passing by. If it's the first time you're passing by, welcome. And thank my subscribers for sticking with me. I really appreciate your loyalty. Today, I wanted to talk about whether or not domestic violence is a breach of human rights. The reason why I want to talk about this topic is because I was looking through the Free Movement newsletter and they and I read something about MY Pakistan versus the Secretary of State and how domestic abuse is not um, a human rights. You can't use domestic abuse to for a human rights claim or words to that effect. So I thought that's an interesting topic. Let me see what I what my thoughts are about it, because, you know, me, I, I kind of like to kind of delve into things. And so um, one in three women aged between 16 and 59 will experience domestic violence in their lifetime. That is a lot. Um, the Home Office can refuse to engage with a human rights claim for permission to stay in the UK, which is not made using the specified form or process. If domestic abuse is not considered a violation of human rights, the appellant cannot use a human rights application. Now, from what I understand, MY Pakistan versus the Secretary of State used a human rights application for his domestic abuse situation. And a victim of domestic abuse is not considered a human rights based application. So it appears that you cannot use domestic abuse as a human rights to apply for a human rights application to stay in the country. Now, for me, I think it is a human rights application. I understand from the Home Office perspective, when they think about human rights, they think about torture in a third, part, th third party country, or they think about victimisation because of someone's sexuality and that kind of stuff. That's what they consider human rights. But human rights is much more fundamental than that. I mean, to be honest, every day one of our human rights are being breached. So it's and they're very easy to breach and they're often breached. They're breached by employers. They're breached by partners. They're breached by government. So domestic abuse is a breach of human rights. And I'll tell you why. What are our human rights? The right to life. Well, almost one in three women like I said, aged between 16 to 59, will experience domestic abuse in their lifetime. But two women a week are killed by a current or former partner in England and Wales. The source is www.refuge.org.uk. So if two women a week are killed by a current or former partner due to domestic abuse, isn't that breaching their right to life? Right to privacy and family life. That covers your right to develop your personal identity and forge friendships and other relationships. This includes the right to participate in essential economic, social, cultural and leisure activities. But how many victims of domestic abuse are deprived they can't even see their family. They're locked away because they don't want anybody to see the scars. The perpetrator doesn't want anybody to see the female scars. Often they don't allow them to go to work for the same reason. So where is their privacy? Where is their, where is their um, family life? Normally they can't go out to see friends. They can't go to the gym. They can't go to the theatre. They're, like they're like prisoners. So, and some of them are financially curtailed for whatever reason. They take away their money or they don't give them any. What about the right to express your own opinion? Right to express your own opinion. You obviously get boof, boof, boof. Who tell you if I go open your mouth? You know what I mean? 
So where is the freedom to express your, your own opinion? And yes, I say in Patwa, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, regardless of whether they say shut your effing mouth or whatever they say, you're not allowed to express your opinion because people feel threatened. Or the perpetrators feel threatened. They feel threatened when you open up your mouth, even if it's a little bit. My mother used to say when my stepfather was aggressive, she said she never used to speak when he was aggressive. She would wait until he was happy and in a good mood, probably want to make love. And that is the time she would speak to him about the things she didn't like or the, the behaviour that she didn't like when he was calm and in a good mood. Otherwise, she never got a chance to um, speak her mind. She never got a chance to express herself. So she was very strategic in how she got her point across. So she did get it across in the end. And he probably, at that time, it still went in because it's something men want. But the fact of the matter is, she had to be very strategic. So freedom from degrading treatment. Beating someone senseless, isn't that degrading? Having scars around your body, isn't that degrading? Being unable to be yourself and having an identity, isn't that degrading? Somebody denouncing you, criticising you all the time, isn't that degrading? Patronising you, trying to make out like you're stupid, isn't that degrading? The right not to be mistreated. And if domestic abuse isn't mistreatment, then I do not know what is. Freedom from slavery and forced labour. In the case of Valerie Du, the French lady who killed her husband because she was a victim of abuse and violence since the age of 12, he forced her into prostitution. That was all a part of the domestic abuse. Freedom from slavery. Was she free from slavery and forced labour? No, she wasn't. So the authorities have to look at domestic abuse differently. They need to look at it for what it is. As long as they'll see it, see it as partners having a row, then it's never, ever going to take priority. It's never, ever going to receive the priority that it's meant to. And you can't hide domestic abuse, especially if you have to go to the doctor. And a lot of these perpetrators, they don't even want the victims to go to the doctor. And the, doctor, the, the, the victims are sitting there with broken legs, broken arms, broken teeth, black eyes, stitches, you know, head needs stitches. And it's not until the, the, the perpetrator realises that they've overdone it, that they said, oh, my God, you know, they take them off to the hospital. And then the hospital can record that in the A&E. But a lot of times these victims have to suffer with their injuries at home in silence. And during that moment, the perpetrator is usually quite kind to them and helps them nurse them back to health before they beat them up again. I know these are extreme cases, but like I've said, in my line of work, I deal with domestic abuse all the time. And I see the reports. This is what happens. Men abusing women in a horrendous, in a horrific way. Treating them like animals and dogs and making them do all kinds of things that I cannot say on camera. But the fact of the matter, it happens. And if that is not a violation of human rights, I don't know what is. Right to a fair trial. By whose definition? No punishment without the law. Abuses punish at whim by stonewalling, beating, ignoring, forcing them to give them money, forcing them to have sex, preventing them from seeing family members and friends. What about a right to an education? A lot of um, 
non non UK nationals who be who get their British citizenship or their indefinite leave to remain their settled status or whatever it is, they bring over partners who have little education, little education and little education. Thinking of the other word I'm thinking about, but they don't speak and they don't speak English properly. And they bring them over to the UK. And these people are vulnerable. They can't speak the language. They're not very educated. And they deprive them of education because they don't want them to get on. They want to keep them in their little pocket. And control them and abuse them and make them reliant on them. How many of you saw Eddie Murphy's Raw, where he went out and he decided that he didn't want anybody to take his money? So he got this African woman from the middle of the jungle with a big bone in her nose and she didn't have no hair and she was big and boof. And he thought, oh, I'm safe with her because she doesn't speak the language. She's not educated. And, you know, she's just in the house. And she'll be doing my cooking and cleaning and be glad for and be glad for me. Next thing you know, the next when he's out at work, the next door neighbor comes in. And these and he, that next door neighbor says to her, Oh, so how are you doing, Ogo? And Ogo says, Oh, not too good, not too good. And so the lady says, Why? Why not? Oh, no money, not cheating too well. So the woman said, you do realise that if he's not treating you well, you can get half of his house and half of his money. And she said, half, half. Anyway, Eddie comes home. <laughs> Eddie Murphy comes home. I know I'm, I'm not remembering it perfectly, but it's something like that. Eddie comes home. And he starts saying, oh, so what did you do today? You need to do this and you need to do that. And she says, half, Eddie, I want half. So Eddie's stuck with this woman with a bone in her nose who wants half of what he's got. But my point is, is that some people do that to exploit, you know, the people who don't speak English properly and who have poor education. And that is depriving them of their human rights not allowing them access to education and, you know, the right to life. Right to peaceful enjoyment. How can you have peaceful enjoyment when you've got somebody shouting at you and deprecating you and there's aggravating behaviour and sometimes they're drunk or sometimes they're on drugs and they're harassing you and there's violence. Where's your peaceful enjoyment? It's another breach of human rights. But that is what domestic victims go through. Freedom of expression, I think I've said that. Right of liberty and security. And like I said before, where's your right to liberty when they confine you to the house because they're ashamed or embarrassed or they don't want anybody to see your scars or your swollen face or your broken ribs? Do they keep you confined? So how can domestic abuse not be a violation of human rights when, according to the Office of National Statistics, about 4.2% of men and 7.9% of women suffered domestic abuse in England and Wales during 2018? This equates to about 685,000 male victims and 3 one million three hundred thousand women. Previous statistics have shown that on average, two women are murdered every week and 30 men are murdered every year due to domestic violence. 16% of violent crime is domestic abuse, through dom though domestic abuse is least likely. I can't get this page now is most likely not to be reported to the police. There are more repeat victims of domestic abuse than repeat victims of any other crime. On average, domestic abuse victims will have been assaulted 68 times 
before reporting it to the police. Domestic abuse is the single most quoted reason a person becomes homeless. They end up without even a place to live. So, do you think domestic abuse breaches your human rights? Let me have your comments. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.